Hi, my name is Jose Suarez. I'm the Communications Director for One Miami. And today we've actually brought a lot of our supporters out to the CPC Speakout um, hosted by the Congressional Progressive Caucus. And our goal is to um, send the members of Congress with one clear message, and that is that we need good paying jobs for hard working families here in Dade County. I'm sure that many people are aware of how um, uh, difficult the unemployment and the economic situation is in Miami. I think we're one of the hardest hit in the nation. The job situation is bleak here. While there is a little bit of job growth, most people are seeing themselves having to do with much less. Uh, some of our supporters here will give stories from being unemployed for over a year to actually um, um, having to take you know more than 50 percent, a 50 percent cut in hours in their current jobs. And so a lot of these people are caught between a rock and a hard place in that. You know, they're not getting a lot of assistance from the government, they don't qualify for Medicaid, they can't afford insurance because they actually have to make the decision of putting food on, the food on the table or having something that right now they consider a luxury like health insurance. And so that's what, you know, our supporters are here for today. And we've brought, you know, I think you'll see that we've brought a boatload to this event and I think the message will be loud and clear. Let me ask you a question. I, I heard a statistic recently that Miami is one of the poorest cities in the nation. Yeah, that is. And um, as a matter of fact, the other day I was listening to um, one of the news talk show radios, and I think it's pretty um, um, well known that Miami actually has around a 24% unemployment. And as you and I know, those are, those are the ones being counted. Those don't include the ones not being counted. Right. And so, you know, we also have some pretty big corporations here that get some pretty big tax breaks and you know we're asking companies like Carnival Cruise Lines and, and Wells Fargo that actually got money back after making 16 billion last year um, you know we're asking them to also do the right thing and pay their fair share we know that they're not breaking the law per se but we are asking to be responsible corporate citizens and help Miami out of the situation that it is and provide our community with good sustainable jobs thank you so very much sir thank you for coming Angelica, I'm here as a student from Miami Day. I'm here because I'm concerned about the higher cost of tuition and yet the cut down on financial aid. I'm concerned that with that issue, because getting only a bachelor's, you can't really get any good, decent job. It's con it concerns me that when I get a bachelor's and I might not have enough income in order to pro in order to continue on into my into my master's or even my doctorates that I would not be able to find any decent jobs or not, and thus not be able to continue on to my higher education. Thank you very much. Okay. Hi, I'm Sandy Davis. I'm the local coordinator in Miami for Progressive Democrats of America, PDA. And we are thrilled today we have Raul Grijalva, the co-chair of the Congressional Progressive Caucus here in Miami to talk about jobs and to talk about what is wrong with our economy and our political system that we cannot provide jobs for people in this country. We're spending, we are now spending uh, more than 20% more on the military than we spent at the height of the Cold War. It costs a million dollars to keep one soldier in Afghanistan. That could provide 20 jobs back home. This is not rocket science. We need to cut the military budget and put America back to work. My, si my sticker here says windmills, not weapons. That is what America needs. We need to put all these people that don't have jobs back to work building windmills and maybe we can actually melt down some of the weapons to make them. How about that? Thank you so much, Sandy. Uh, we are taking video uh, of all of the... My reason for being here today is because I love Liberty City. And I'll be here to the day I die. But the problem is, my community don't have no wealth. They're the last of the community that is at its worst. Even when there's jobs, our community in Liberty City don't have any jobs. And it's time that when no federal dollars come down for that transit village, 
that's being built there that's recommended our people will be employed, will be able to come back to that community and live because they want to stay there just like me because they live, they love their community of Liberty City. Hello, I'm Sandy Davis with Progressive Democrats of America. And first of all, I would like to thank the Congressional Progressive Caucus for being a shining light in the darkness the very, very dark times for our country. At the Riverside Church in 1967, at the height of the U.S. war in Vietnam, Martin Luther King talked about the promise of the war on poverty. And then he said this, then came the buildup in Vietnam, and I watched the war on poverty broken and eviscerated as if it were some idle political plaything of a society gone mad on war. And I knew that America would never invest the necessary funds or energies in rehabilitation of its poor so long as adventures like Vietnam continued to draw men and skills and money like some demonic, destructive suction tube. Now the military budget for past Congress last week is 30% higher in real terms than the one that Martin was talking about in 1967. Congressman Grijalva, can you please explain how that contributes to the problems we are talking about today and tell us what the Congressional Progressive Caucus is trying to do about it. Thank you. Uh, the Progressive Caucus uh, submitted its own budget in this discussion. Uh, you know, the Republicans passed the Ryan budget and we know uh, what the consequences of that budget is, are going to be to the American people with, if it is ever ratified by the Senate or and said, uh, but we, we promoted our own budget that looked at, uh, we balanced the budget by 2021, 20, created a surplus, uh, cut the deficit by 5.6 trillion, invested 1.7 trillion in jobs for American people, uh, strengthened Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, and, uh, and invested in education. So, and we did that uh, without uh, hurting any programs. And, and I think it's all about priorities, but we did look at the military and say that, that there had to be a reduction. We looked at rolling back Bush's tax cuts. We looked at clo closing all the corporate loopholes and rolling back those, uh, those subsidies that we give corporations. Because, you know, everybody's talking about a shared sacrifice. And one of the things you're good, we're hearing today, that that sacrifice ain't being shared. That there are some, that a disparity among the haves and the have-nuts in this country has grown wider and wider and wider. And so our budget attempted to say to the American people, there are options out there. There are options. And I, and I think, uh, uh, one, it's not only the military issue, it's been a fiscal policy for 10 years that has shifted um, the priorities of this nation. And I, uh, I think that uh, because of this debt ceiling issue, because of the deficit, people are paying more and more attention now to if we're going to survive as a nation economically, we can't keep burdening the same people over and over with the debt. <laughs> My name is Will Brown. I'm with the um, Martin Luther King Voters League, and I just have a few things to mention. Um, we would like to like you to look into speculators on Wall Street that are um, boosting these prices for um, the gasoline, yeah. and that's the one thing that's crippling this economy. And I think some people are not focusing in on that. It's the one thing that is um, is hurting um, average people in the pocket. Another thing, we want to see bills that impact local local people that relates to job creation. Okay? And then the last thing but not least is that until we take the power to make decisions away from corporate lobbyists 
and the super rich right. and put it back into the hands of the people, then we can move on. How many of you think that we should Four. raise taxes Four. on? Well, let's go through the one by one. How many of you think that we should raise taxes on? opportunities for his friends and big business than he does about Floridians who are struggling to make ends meet. We are under attack by a Republican state legislature that thinks so little of the problems facing so many out-of-work Floridians that they wanted to cut unemployment benefits from 26 down to 12 weeks. We are under attack by a legislature that says that they want to improve education in our state, but instead take away job security for every teacher no matter how well their students perform. The same legislature that cut $542 per child for public education, further jeopardizing the future of our state and solidifying Florida's place as one of the lowest per student spending states in the nation. During the 2010 election, Rick Scott campaigned with promises of jobs across the state of Florida. With the most heavily Republican state legislature in the nation, Rick Scott has not signed a single jobs bill. As a matter of fact, the Republican legislature did not even propose a jobs bill during the 2011 session. To the governor who promised so many jobs during his 2010 campaign, I have to ask, where are the jobs? To the legislature, to the legislature that is so heavily controlled by the Republican Party, I have to ask, where are the jobs? On May 27th, I received an email from Rick Scott. 
Daddy Mel boasts his signing of a budget that he calls Florida's jobs budget. If a budget that cuts tremendous amounts of money for veterans, seniors, teachers, and children is Rick Scott's idea of a jobs budget, I think we need to find him another job. In 2012, are we going to make the same mistake? No! When you go home today, I want you to remember three words. Every election matters. If we all do our part, we can turn this state around in 2012. And in 2014, we can find a new job for Rick Scott. But we all have to remember and preach those three words. I want to hear everybody in here say them with me. Every election matters. And don't forget it. Hi, my name is Ed Wujak, and I have two reactions to the uh, to this event, which I enjoyed. First of all, it's useful to be reminded how much pain there still is in the community. Uh, it's easy to forget. We need to remember. Secondly, it's a little bit hopeful to notice that not everyone from Washington is deluded. So it's nice that there are a few non-deluded people in Washington, and I hope they can make a difference. Thank you. My name is Dr. Ken Lipner. I'm a retired economics professor from Florida International University. I sit on several public agency boards and do some volunteer work in several areas. And let me just add, I'm very interested in dog rescue and stopping dog killing. Um, my concern, and I, I enjoyed today's meeting, but my particular view, and I look at the international economy, and I've been doing it for some time, that at least in the media's short term, a bounce back is unlikely. And my particular point of view is a concept, it's known by different things, one of it is shared scarcity. And that would imply taking the existing jobs and spreading them out to more people. For instance, 75 years ago, Franklin Roosevelt understood you had four people doing 200 hours of labor. And the law was changed, it's known as the Fair Labor Standards Act, to create a 40-hour week, which meant you had five people working 40 hours doing uh, 200 hours of labor, and that immediately created more jobs. I'm suggesting in this economy we need some sort of adjustment. I hope I'm wrong that in fact the economy bounces back tomorrow, that the jobs come back from Asia, they come back from everywhere, people get their houses back, their jobs back, if I can make a bad joke, sort of like playing a country music record backward. You get your job back, you get your car back, you get your wife back, you get your girl back. I hope that happens. I don't see it happen. I travel, I'm a lucky guy. I feel very bad for all the people here. I have been able to travel extensively. I'm in Asia from Tokyo to Singapore. There's tremendous boom. The students are educated, the workers are efficient. I understand the market economy, and to be quite honest, I can't see any rational reason for profit-making global corporations to suggest they really have a heart. Corporations aren't people. So in this way, I hope we can make do in the short run at least, I hope it's not the long run, and we'll have to get labor people to go along, business people to go along, government people to go along, sharing jobs. In other words, if people give up five hours a week or eight hours a week, and then give that to their fellow brother and sister so they won't lose their job. Do you see any hope at all in a change in tax policy that still encourages corporations to move their jobs overseas? That would be helpful, there's no doubt about that, however, without getting too technical, okay, that the international wage structure is so, I'm going to use the word, slanted. For example, the South Koreans are doing so well, they're now 
sending their jobs to North Korea. Ironically, the waste of money and life when we fought in Vietnam. The Vietnamese are doing so well, they're sending their jobs to the poor people of Cambodia. Okay. This is the global world we're in. I'd like to see a Beatles reunion. Well, I'm Brian Stetton, I'm uh, president of the uh, Broward County chapter of the Progressive Democrats of America, and I'm here to see members of the Progressive Caucus and their plans for job growth. Uh, I think they have a big battle ahead of them because the corporate elite have pretty much sabotaged the country, uh, especially in the state of Florida. Rick Scott, just a matter of a couple of weekends ago, had a private meeting with one of the Koch brothers. And the GEO Corp is tastily looking to privatize our prisons. None of this is going to create job growth. Uh, the corporate elite are pushing to downsize our government because they have this attitude of uh, get rid of your social safety networks because we don't want to pay for it. And, uh, or we'll crash the entire system. And that's what they're doing. And we have to fight back. Kit Rafferty. South Florida Jobs with Justice. We're a labor and community organization. We empower the working classes in the South Florida area to fight for good jobs and a fair economy. Well, thank you so much. Uh, you just experienced the jobs for ju the uh, the jobs event held by the Progressive Caucus. What was your thoughts on the on the event? I, I think it's a it's a great idea. I hope they take the message back to Washington because they all are in agreement with us, but we have many in Washington who aren't doing things like taxing the rich and making it a fair economy for everyone, a level playing field for everybody. Well, hopefully they can get our voice to that, uh, that planning table. Yes, that's what they need to do. They need to take back the message and fight for our communities. We're hurting in this community. We have, there are many areas which have as, as high as 24% unemployment, and those people want jobs. They don't want a handout. They want a, they want good jobs, and they want to make their communities better. And their this particular Congress is not uh, allowing that to happen down here. So I hope we do take the message back to Washington D.C. Thank you so very much.